I'm Cara Johnstad, and I'm sitting here with Anna Lena Bruland, who's an amazing songwriter and producer. And we are lucky <laughs> at the School of Voice to have her as a songwriting teacher, coach, really a guide to voices, whether they're young or old. She teaches kids that are eight or nine. She's teaching and has taught people that are 50, 60 coming into the workshops. And so you can um, sense a lot of your ability, I guess, to catch people where they are. So my first question, and this interview is basically to let many of you know outside of, well, I guess that's, that's kind of crazy outside of this little interview space, but to let other people know like what is available, right? What is available from how you are working at the School of Voice and I have to edit this video. <laughs> so let me, so, so as a songwriter, Annalena, you're a songwriter, yeah. you're a producer. Yeah. First of all, what do you love about sharing your gifts and your talents and everything you've experienced in songwriting with your students? Well, I think for me, coming into this school, I think it's very important to take a very different approach than what I myself has received as a student when I went to university. Because I remember when I did songwriting lessons at university, I found it really frustrating because I felt like the teacher never allowed me to be me. It was very rule-based and it was very like you need to fit in this certain pop kind of way of writing and I always find even though I love pop music it's not that I'm saying but I think you can write anything you want and in any way you want and it's still going to be a song and I think that for me is very important that when the student comes in one of the first questions I ask the student is what do you listen to what do you like to do like what are your interests um what inspires you like what do you want to write about it's not it's I'm there to help them feel more relaxed and comfortable and understand how to find their creative mind because I think it can take some time to to find that and I and I find it with my students that it takes them a bit of while to kind of loosen up and warm up and then they get more and more honest with me and then they understand how to listen to a song what a verse is what a chorus is and all of these things. So for me, it's very important that it becomes like a natural kind of process for them. And it's not me to sit there and be like, this is right or wrong. But it's more me to say like, do you think this sounds cool? Okay, let's go for it. You know, just to gain that confidence within them, basically. I love yeah. that. I love <laughs> that. Because the music industry needs more songwriters that are really speaking from their heart, honesty. We have many different ways to write songs it used to be that people would just write 12 verses and tell the story right and yeah. certain folk songs right and mm -hmm. so we got into a certain format of verse chorus bridge and it has to be whatever two and a half mm -hmm. minutes long otherwise it's not a song exactly. but we know that painters are writing or are painting like huge canvases or tiny little scribbles on papers you know mm -hmm. my, my big uh, revelation as a songwriter was when I was sitting at a, a friend's gallery and they had a little scribble from Picasso, actually, it was Picasso. And I was like, dang, if Picasso can sell a scribble, we can sell eight bars, little mantra haikus, and we can sell a whole album, which is just one song. Absolutely. So that's how vast we are as, mm -hmm. as songwriters. So, I guess I did want to ask you how you started your own personal journey then. I know that you play an instrument. Were you journaling? Were you writing poetry? Were you singing, like crossing the, the fields and mountains? Or, or what <laughs> brought you to wanting to express yourself in songs? Well, I always listened to a lot of music from a very young age. Um, and I remember when I turned, I think it was maybe... 13 or something like that I started to listen to more like grunge and rock and indie stuff and that's because that's kind of my world and that's when I really fell in love with music and when I listened to that and also some like folk music singer songwriter -y stuff and I don't know I'd had this like weird connection with the music and I got completely lost in it and I needed to have my disc man at the time trying not to make it skip wow. walk into school you know 
and I just had to have like music with me all the time and uh, it made me feel different and better in myself and then I I've always sung like I you know sang in choirs I did the whole musical theater thing when I was younger and my confidence started boosting because I got the lead role in the musicals and I was like okay so I can sing you know one of those things and then I did a lot of classical training. I started playing classical piano when I was six uh, because my grandparents, uh, my granddad used to be a composer and a trumpet player, nice. but he wanted his grandkids to play an instrument. So he helped my mom pay for the lessons, which is very sweet of him. Um, so I managed, I started that. And then uh, in Norway, you can choose a topic uh, before you go to further education. So from the age of, I think it's 15 and 18, you can choose a speciality. So I chose music. Uh, and that's when it re opened up to the writing part. I had a friend of mine, Kaya, we used to sit in the hallway and used to show each other little ideas we had on the guitar. And she was like my best friend at the time. And we started performing together. I sang on her songs. And she's actually quite a successful artist in Norway now, which is quite funny. Um, so, you know, so we started doing that. And then I moved to Liverpool when I was 18 to start at LIPA, which is the Liverpool Institute of Performing Arts. And that's when I met a lot of people that were just me. And that's when the journey really happened. You know, when I wrote every day, um, got loads of feedback, started a band. And that's kind of when it really happened. Uh, mm. And yeah. And you also even got pulled in probably through your studies in Liverpool to laying down tracks. So it wasn't only just, you know, putting it on paper, but suddenly you could hear your creations and you could kind of, in a way, preserve them. Because we know as singers, it's we, we sing in a club or at a concert and poof, at the end of the evening, it's not there anymore. It's not like a mm -hmm. painter who hangs his painting on the wall and the people can always look at it every day in a gallery. It's a gone. So the mm. only way we can we can keep it kind of safe, those ideas, mm. is to start recording. So that's something also that you have really um, built out for yourself, or you're really you're really um, what would you say adept at at using the tools that we have for audio production to empower yeah. other other people and also your own stuff. So you can produce what you feel. What yeah, you absolutely. Follow mm. the sound, right? And I and I think that's another thing because when I was younger, I used to just record on my phone, you know, just press, you know, voice memo, which is great. And I think everyone should do that just to remember their ideas, right. even if it's a voice thing, just voice or guitar and voice, piano voice, whatever. But I do think um, after a few years, I got frustrated because I went into spaces with producer or whatever, and I could not completely explain what I was hearing in my head I was like yes. I know what I want in my head in terms of arrangement sound everything and that's a practice thing I think I tell my students that too like listen to your tune what is it that you love in this tune is it the synth line that goes on top is it the harmonies is it the rocky guitar is it the soft piano what is it that you love about this tune um and then take that to your own songs try and you know bring that with you and that for me was quite important to understand more about production because it made me think, okay, if I'm actually going to explain this better to someone, I need to learn production. And I'm not the best producer in the world by all means, but I've gotten to a point where I'm good enough that I can record a demo that sounds pretty good in the terms of I can show to someone and they'll get what I want immediately. Yeah. And yeah. I think if you can get to that point, because I don't have interest to produce anyone else, this is just... So I can do me basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think if you can get to that point, you're going to gain a lot of confidence in who you are as a writer, but also you can step into a studio environment more confidently and explain to a producer more confidently what you want. And that's something that I think could be really cool to also bring into my classes eventually and someday is to go along with my student to a production, mm -hmm. to, to proper studio. Yeah. And sit there with my student and then say, like, okay, how are you going to talk to the drummer? How are you going to talk to the producer? How are you going to, like, explain this? Because I think that's also in itself is a whole language. It is. You know, it's a whole new world again. Yeah. Uh, and I think you can feel very overwhelmed in these settings, too. Yeah. So it's also to get and not to have a producer talking over you because it's your song. It's not the producer's song. Very good. 
you know so I think that's another thing that production helped me to understand yeah and even before I, I know this with a lot of singers that they they don't realize how you can do your homework before you even find a producer because I think when you work on your own sound a lot of people are just happy like oh my god I found a producer someone's going to produce me and mm -hmm. they might be doing acoustic songs and he actually likes doing techno or I don't know something exactly. really different or even mm. pop but it's a very different sound so the more we hone into listening what do we like what you're saying you know the more we can start becoming aware like well actually I like electronic or I don't like electronic or I like just voice and guitar mm. we will be sure when we find or look for a producer or find a producer if they're not producing that kind of sound mm. it's probably going to be hard for them to help us realize our own sound. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and absolutely. I think that's where a lot of people lose their power. And then you get a lot of frustrated artists that have given away rights or given away a lot of, of their really good material. And it's not the producer's fault and it's not their fault. It's just they don't understand, like you were saying before, he can't read their mind. The more we know what we really want, the more we're going to automatically find the people the circles of people that can support us and empower us to bring that out and and like you said which i i love i i do think it's a totally different language and a very important language for singers to know for example oh how does a drummer actually he has also different needs mm -hmm. he has different needs he needs to know where's the break or are we doing an outro or intro or like how long is it or or a keyboarder might need clear harmonics he doesn't he, he doesn't do well with scribbles so he might he even though you can play it for him he might be somebody who reads right exactly other yeah. people are really good at hearing right so they don't need you to read they just need you to play it once and they got it they're, they're mm -hmm. gonna get it you know mm -hmm. so that's a that's very empowering on elaine i love knowing that you are working like this and thinking like this and um yeah i guess you are now offering you're starting to offer you've already done it you got rave reviews the mm -hmm. workshops that we did in the fall they were just everybody was yeah thrilled actually to um get to know more about songwriting and also what we love is with the workshops and maybe even to build it into courses or classes is in a group you also get inspired from each other right yeah so what are some of the takeaways that you see happening in your workshops when people start writing can anybody do it can can you come with like you know you don't sing well but maybe you play guitar or you don't play any instrument at all how how does that work yeah, I think absolutely anyone can do it. I think um, in my class, what we did, we started off writing one song in a group setting. Uh, so I just show them how I usually start a song. And then we did a song together in a group. And then I divided everyone up. So they went individual groups. Uh, and then I kind of went and checked on them in during their process. And I think, and then we performed for each other at the end and talked about the songs. So I think that way of working is really interesting because to have another person there to push you on and and uh you know to 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 help you uh, finish things i think was really good uh and also i found that they were all quite surprised that they managed to write a song they were like after the lesson they were like oh we like wrote a song like that's crazy after like what what was it four hours or something um and uh what else was I going to say? Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, you can, you can play an instrument, not play an instrument. I don't think it really matter. I do think um, that it's good to have, because well, I had some students and they couldn't really play an instrument. And I said, like, literally just play like one note of the piano. Just like think of a rhythm on the piano. Like anyone can like press a note on the yes. piano and do this, you know, do that. And they just did that and sang on top of it, you know? Yeah. So yeah. it's like, or I said, you can sing a cappella. I'm happily just do a cappella. And they were great singers. I said, do some harmonies, you know, great. sing a cappella with some harmonies. Like great. it doesn't need to be um, anything like that. And I've had students like that before who comes and they have like a, a line, a cappella line, and I help them find the chords that fits yeah. fits it, you know. So that could be another thing if they 
sing a cappella and I can come in and be like, okay, these chords fit or these chords fit over it, you know. Because you also take, um, you're also doing privates at the School of Voice. So Mm -hmm. we have the workshops that are launching more or less this beautiful vision that we um, both carry actually to bring songwriting more and more out into the world. And you're teaching, which I love, you're teaching um, young girls and women. You're also, of course, teaching adults and songwriters that are breaking into the business. You have people that are interested in artist development. Um, That is probably also this ability that you have maybe to be the the mirror, the set of listening ears, right? So Mm -hmm. a lot of times when we're by ourselves, or I know this from my own self as a, as a, from my own, yeah, from my own self as a songwriter, we sometimes don't know when songs are finished or we can get, we can get in a, in a, you know, we, we can just, we can get in a loop. Like some songs just come through us, but sometimes we are working on songs for a year or two. Mm. And so that's when it's probably also good to have someone ask powerful questions. Like, what did you mean by this line? Or, or what did you, or, or can you give me a different image? Because you've already had this image of whatever being, mm-hmm. what, whatever it might be. Like you're leaving a relationship, you have the same image in every single verse. Can we, can we move the story? Mm-hmm. And when we're so close to a story, if we don't have enough experience, we can get caught. Mm-hmm. So it's good yeah. to have that mirror. Is that what you see when you're teaching privately, that you, that people are finishing their songs faster, not because they're feeling pushed, but because they have a clarity? I have a clarity, and I think and I hope that I, you know, inspire them to, to keep going, and I think it's very important to boost their confidence. I think it's important to not throw tons of criticism at the start. You know, I think it's important to just get them moving and get their confidence up. Because I think that's another thing as a writer, it's a very personal thing. So to get someone to criticize you can be very difficult. And I, and I've been through that myself. I'm better at it now because I'm older, but I think especially when I was a teenager, it was really difficult to get criticized, you know, and especially if you're in the industry and you've been working really hard as I am, and I've been working really hard on some songs, I send it off to management and they go like, well, this song isn't going to do that well on radio. Like then like that conversation comes into play as well. That's obviously on like a more quote unquote professional level. But I think for now, a lot of my students are just starting out writing. So I think number one priority is just to get the writing brain going and understand how the process is. And then when they're open for it and feel stronger, then I'm happily put in way more criticism and be a bit more, as you can make say harsher, but I don't really, like to say harsher as a word but yeah just picking up hard a bit more um but for me I think the best the the one thing I've noticed with them the most is that they understand the process better and they and therefore they are managed to writing faster and I'm not saying that every song we write is amazing but it's every song is you know it's working that brain like I say like we have to train our writing brain the same way as we go to the gym or, you know, or do our vocal warm-ups. It's the same yeah. kind of thing, you know? Yeah. I yeah. love this. It's actually how it's very organic because you don't, mm-hmm. when, when you're, when you're even planting your garden, if you cut it back too fast, that plant is going to die. Yeah. Exactly. So it's really respect. It's the respect that we have <laughs> when we start other projects, like when we start learning to paint, we sometimes mm-hmm. allow ourselves the, 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 give ourselves the liberty just to to draw or sketch things or whatever mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. the music maybe because it is so personal we sometimes mm-hmm. have an expectation that everything mm-hmm. comes out finished yeah so yeah, have, yeah right so you have this really beautiful approach um which is have it be a process have it be a ha- yeah. have it be a lifestyle yeah right? so my bark my dog is barking my bark is barking your bark no, is okay. barking Bark is barking. It's all right, Donnie. Yeah, which is, which is nice that that dogs also have great voices, right? <laughs> yeah, um, she's got a loud one. She has That's a loud sure. one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, let me let me just look if I have anything else that I love people to know. I know we have upcoming workshops, so at schoolofvoice.berlin, they can check it out. Otherwise, on social media. Oh, I know. I wanted to say you teach. 
you know, you teach at the Berlin studios, but you also are teaching online. And I think from what I know about also teaching online, but it songwriting works really well online. So you're very yeah. open to working with uh, people that want to start songwriting or people that are already songwriters in that online space. Is that yeah, definitely. Nice? Yeah, that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I find that it's, it's good too. And I think um, for online uh, more than anything, I think, you know, giving them tasks to do at home, I think is quite important because um I don't know it feels like you know I can show them a lot through talking and and stuff like that uh online which works well with giving them a task to do for next week and then we continue and I can listen to their progress um but definitely I mean the the sound and everything is so developed on zoom calls and stuff now that it's even like a tick that's for musicians to have a better sound yeah. on zoom you know, yeah. so that says a lot that a lot of people are doing this, you know, yeah. even soon put that in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like that, it definitely works. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've uh, taught online really on, between phones, iPads, laptops, uh, people standing in bathrooms, people in kitchens, bedrooms. Yeah. And I even had uh, some people that are on vacation and they ended up uh, building with, you know, well, beer kästchen in German. They, they build a little thing in the middle of a parking lot. And yeah. Wow. So it's like it's oh. so you can do it from anywhere in the world with an internet connection, mm -hmm. right? Definitely. It's cool. yeah. I mean, even if you don't have the internet directly, you can get a card and you can be online. I think mm -hmm. we can kind of wrap this up because everything else has to do, which we can just connect again with, you know, are there specific formulas to writing or whatever? But what I, what I really appreciate is this tapping into the essence that you're really mm -hmm. each person as an individual with their own stories. And maybe you agree with me, all you need to write a song is probably a good story and some good imagination, because what you're saying is, you know, even if I only play one note at the piano mm -hmm. and then I start maybe even speaking on top of it, yeah, yeah. that's my singing voice yet, then pretty soon I'm going to maybe want to figure out, oh, what is the second mm -hmm. note that I want to push at the same time or exactly. what is the, the shaker or, you know, maybe I, yeah, take an old tin can and throw some rice yeah. in it and tape it up and so you can work with this instrument that we have which is our body and our heart and our ears and we don't need lots of money for fancy equipment in the beginning to be so no no and i and i think that you're right i think the most important thing is to have someone to say you know that's you need to have something to say and i think <clears throat> It's difficult to explain, but I think writers get this. You feel it in your gut, you know, when something feels right, you feel it in your, in your gut. Mm -hmm. And and I love that when I see that when I work with students and I go like, no, go for it. I push them. I go like, no, try it. Like, try this, try that. Mm -hmm. And then I see their body language change when they find the chords that they love. And they're like, oh, they're like they, they kind of settles in. I was like, that's the one. There, there it is, you know. Yeah. There's all about just getting them to trust their own instincts. And, and push away all the other kind of rules that they've been taught before. Because I think for me, improvisation is very important in songwriting too. It's very, very important because when you improvise, you completely lose time and space. You yeah. completely lose yourself in the music. And I think if you can do that, that's when the best ideas come out. I really believe in that. Instead of following specific, oh, I need to go to a D major or G minor. Because I had students before saying to me, I went to this class and they said this scale is really good for writing songs or they yeah. said that this chord should come after this chord. I was like, no, <laughs> it doesn't need to be that way. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think that's very important for me anyway, to teach in that way. Yeah. No, I, I, I love that because I think that there's a lot of people that get stuck on their, you know, that's the basic chord progression or these are the, you know, you have to work with this scale and there's no new sounds. We even know from classical music, you know, Chopin sounds very different than Beethoven and Debussy mm -hmm. sounds very different than Tchaikovsky because mm -hmm. of the different choices they made, right? And that was the individuality. And it should be that as musicians were able to explore 
dissonance and, and, and crunchy things and edgy things and beats that we don't know and it doesn't always have to be 4-4. Four, four. Maybe suddenly we have 5-4 and 3-4 and 4-4 four, four and because that's the way our, our breath is unwinding basically. Or yeah. Unwinding. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I often say to my students too, confidence comes with the ability to confide, right? Mm -hmm. So when somebody has a great teacher and they're able to have that place of trust and what you're doing is you're guiding them to be able to trust their intuition and to confide then what's so magical is the confidence happens that what they're saying and their message and their idea of beauty and the world is important yeah they're very important for yeah all of us and when yeah. when somebody lives themselves basically mm -hmm. we are also supported to live ourselves right we're not yeah, yeah clones all over the place and mm -hmm. yeah so i i love that so anna lena thank you mm -hmm. so much for being part of the school of voice and for bringing yeah, of your course. wisdom and your yeah your 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 way your approach which is very important i i have this group of programs called voice your essence and for me it is a lot about just finding the essence of every every human being has something very special and that yeah. you draw that out is cool and for everybody out there that might be listening, check out the private classes and check out the workshops that are going to come more regularly and that are already happening. And Anna Lena has only amazing reviews. People, people do love you. It's really beautiful to see what you're creating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I